All right. So I, again, uh, I'm a senior adoption consultant. That is all my contact information if you need to get a hold of me, uh, whether it relates to lightning, multi-factor authentication, et cetera. Before uh, we get started, though, I do need to walk you through the forward-looking statement. Just reminding you that we are a publicly traded company, so make any and all purchasing decisions, excuse me, based on what's currently and readily available in the application today. <laughs> all right, so we have a few things to run through today. Really, the importance of MFA, multi-factor authentication, what that means for Salesforce and your org, how to use something we call the Salesforce Authenticator to authenticate as that second factor, how to plan for a su successful rollout. As you know, it's all about change management, some resources that we have for you, and then if we have time, uh, uh, Q&A. Now, we understand the confidentiality, the integrity, and the availability of Salesforce data is really vital to you, our customers. So we take the protection of that customer data very seriously. And as security threats grow outside, you may see them in the news, um, they're really growing in, in increasingly common. And so it's essential for our customers to implement stronger measures of account to access security to protect their customers and their business. So think about uh, all the customer data that you have and the it, really the integrity that it is to keep that uh, safe. Now, at Salesforce, we do build security into everything that we do from the ground up, but our commitment to delivering secure products is really only half the story because security is a shared responsibility between you and us. As a steward for your business's security, you really play a critical role in safeguarding your data and your customers' data. And your Salesforce data is valuable. And it really could be the target of what we call bad actors. So a key part of your security strategy is safeguarding access to your Salesforce user account. So it's important to implement strong security measures to protect your business and your customers. And one of the simplest, most effective ways to prevent unauthorized account access and protect your Salesforce products and data is through employing what we call multi-factor authentication. You may also hear it uh, called two-factor authentication, uh, but for the rest of uh, the slides and the presentation, it will either be multi-factor or MFA. MSA adds an extra layer of security to your login process by requiring users to verify their identity with two or more pieces of what we call evidence or factors, really to prove that they are who they say they are. Those factors are something the user knows, such as a username and a password, and something they have, like the code from an authentication app on a mobile device. Now, if we think about this really agnostic of Salesforce, that could be uh, something like going to an ATM to pull out cash. You uh, have something, your card, and you know something, your PIN. Um, it may also be uh, trying to gain access to some of your banking apps or your credit card apps, things that hold critical information about you, where you know your username and password, but then there's also something else that's sent to you uh, to, to factor into that application. And so it's really no different um, as we think about Salesforce. When a user sets up MFA, or, or when you, the admin, sets up MFA, your users will be able to use one of the approved second factors to secure their account. So we have Salesforce Authenticator, a security key, like a YubiKey or a WebAuth token, or a TOTP generator app, something like that, where users um, can go and get a one-time code or a code of some sort. What we don't uh, allow, though, is uh, SMS or email for MFA. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. If, a current, or if, a, if you currently have an identity provider or an IDP and uh, have implemented an SSO solution for your Salesforce instance, uh, you do not need to use MFA for your Salesforce accounts. We strongly suggest customers use an IDP to further secure Salesforce and their other applications. And with a well-implemented SSO strategy, you can reduce password-related risks, 
improve authentication processes, make it easier for your users to log into frequently used applications. But really consider that passwords are often the target of common attacks, such as phishing. So uh, there's a risk that access to your users' accounts could be compromised. And if you rely on user um, credentials alone for your SSO solution, um, we recommend that you consider enabling MSA for that identity provider as an additional safeguard. Currently, these Salesforce products have MSA support. We have Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, B2C Commerce Cloud, B2B Commerce Cloud Platform, uh, Analytics Cloud, Financial Services Cloud, Health Cloud, Manufacturing Cloud, Consumer Goods Cloud, Government Cloud, Philanthropy, Philanthropy uh, Cloud, Community Cloud, Salesforce Essentials. And going forward, this is one of our top priorities to provide the strongest authentication capabilities across clouds. So if you don't see the clouds that you're using, uh, we, we are making it a priority to provide MFA and deliver MFA functionality for all Salesforce products. We'll be in touch with updates and resources as MFA becomes available for any additional products. So just keep that in mind if uh, you're using something outside of what you see here on this slide. For MFA, Salesforce supports only those strong authentication factors uh, that we mentioned before. So uh, a factor uh, that a user must have in their possession, uh, remember it could be a, a code or uh, something like a YubiKey. Users though cannot use second factors like SMS or email for MFA, just keep that in mind. Um, and that's really because it's a lot harder for those bad actors to get control of an actual mobile device or hardware security key than it is to infiltrate an email account or hack a cell phone number. Depending on what Salesforce products you're using, we support these types of strong factors, just uh, as a reminder uh, from the previous slide, but it is the Salesforce Authenticator mobile app, third-party authenticator apps such as Google Authenticator or Authy, and hardware security keys such as YubiKey or Google's Titan security key. Salesforce offers simple, innovative MFA solutions uh, like Salesforce Authenticator, and that provides a balance between strong security and user convenience. So uh, what you see here on the screen is our Authenticator app. The uh, Authenticator mobile app is a strong authentication factor that users can easily install and connect to their Salesforce accounts. The app is free, and it's simple to use. Uh, you just go on to uh, the um, Apple Store or Google uh, to download it, and um, it, it minimizes the impact of MSA on the user experience. So we definitely want to make sure that we're considering the user experience in all of this, um, as uh, it impacts, you know, their their use of Salesforce, how they log in. Now, this uh, makes the extra authentication step required by MSA easy because it automatically integrates into your current Salesforce login process. After a user enters their username and password, the app sends a notification to their mobile device. They see the information that you see on the screen, so the username that they're using, the service that they're trying to log into. Uh, I, I know people who use the Salesforce Authenticator app for um, things outside of Salesforce, um, so they'll see the service that is really asking for that second factor. The device that's being used um, when trying to access the account, um, and then what you see here is an option to always approve. So there is a setting within a multi-factor uh, when you're setting it up, uh, more or less to allow your users to approve if they're always in the same location. So something to keep in mind there. Um, if your users, you know, are always at their desk, this may be a, a big win for them a lot more convenient than always going in and approving. If that's something that you uh, don't want though, you can definitely uh, not allow it. Uh, but um, it will also show where that person is trying to log in from. And then when they receive this alert on their phone, they can either approve or deny. So this is something uh, where uh, uh, if someone was trying to log into your account and you were not the person who was trying to do that, you would receive this notification and you could always deny it, um, more or less marking it as, as fraud. Now, 
if you're using something like the Salesforce Authenticator or something like a Google Authenticator, uh, we do definitely recommend that um, anything on your phone has an additional step to access. So that could be a PIN or a biometric requirement um, so that even if someone was to maybe get uh, both your laptop and your phone or uh, uh, your phone and they're trying to access it from their from your phone, um, you they would have that additional step of um, entering a PIN or that biometric. But with everything that we do in Salesforce, we have to think about our users. And so um, within the rollout, uh, there, there really are three steps um, or, or ways that your users are affected during the rollout. So they're going to spend a little bit of time getting their additional authentication factor set up. Keep that in mind and um, make sure that you're open to support that. Uh, if you decide to use an authenticator app like Salesforce Authenticator, uh, make sure that your users obtain the authentication factor uh, by downloading and installing the app so that uh, when you roll this out, it's quick and easy for them to um, pair their user account with their mobile device. If you opt to use a hardware security key, make sure that you obtain and distribute those keys to your users. Make sure that um, if they are distributed outside of your main location there, that um, you send them with plenty of time so that come launch day, everyone is ready and set up uh, with those hardware keys. Again, you can do either mobile or um, a hardware security key. Now, when users uh, go to connect, they're going to need that authentication factor. So, uh, again, make sure that they understand where they can obtain that, whether it's on their mobile app or uh, some, some hardware that you're giving them. And then once MFA is turned on, uh, the login process is going to prompt the users to provide their authentication factor after they enter their username and password. So make sure that your users understand what that means and are ready to do so when you start utilizing MFA. Uh, as with everything, let's uh, make sure that we're getting ready to roll out MFA. Uh, we recommend conduct conducting an audit of users who have one or more powerful or privileged permissions while planning for your rollout for uh, any of the Salesforce products where MFA is supported. And if you're wondering what the heck is a privileged permission, well, an example would be uh, add and modify users, modify all data, and things like that, where they have more access than just your standard user. And so we really recommend that you begin looking at who has a sysadmin profile, who are your developers who have those uh, privileged permissions, uh, validate that their privileged access is, um, is necessary. Don't um, necessarily make everyone a sysadmin within your org because uh, we want to make sure that uh, really access to your org um, and what you can do within your org is limited to those individuals who need it. Uh, so uh, once you've identified those individuals who have those privileged permissions, see if you can reduce the number um, of those sysadmins or those individuals with a lot of power within your org. Uh, apply the principle of what we call least privilege. So as a, uh, as a best practice, make sure that your users really only have um, the permissions to do what they need to do and nothing beyond that. Uh, so best practice, um, make sure users only have what they need to do their jobs. Securing this population of users is really the first and the most significant step towards securing access to Salesforce. Um, so we recommend that you do it before implementing anything like MFA. Uh, once you feel comfortable with the profiles and permissions that your users have, uh, roll out MFA to maybe a smaller portion of your users. We recommend that you start with the admins, those who have the most um, uh, privileged permissions, so that uh, the ones who are maybe the greatest target are the safest and the hardest to, um, to access by what we call, again, those bad actors. Incorporate lessons learned from this pilot user group into uh, your next rollout. 
So as you're starting to move on from your system admins, if you're taking this based approach, um, build in whatever you're, you're learning to the end user communications, building awareness of the upcoming MSA rollout under and making your users understand why security is important for you, uh, your org, and for them, and for your data, and, and really uh, securing your customers' information. And as you think about future change management plans, consider communicating ahead of time to your users. It's really never um, too early to communicate upcoming changes to your users. Uh, let them know that MFA is coming and why it's important. Again, uh, it, this is something where it, it doesn't impact sales. You know, it doesn't increase sales. It doesn't help them solve more, uh, more tickets. So we really need them to understand why this is important and why they need to care about it. Uh, create a forum like a chatter group or a Slack channel where you can communicate and answer questions throughout the rollout. And build awareness ahead of time by putting up posters, run a week-long email drip campaign, whatever speaks to your um, to your users. Really do that to help them build awareness. Maybe it's not um, an email coming from you. Maybe it's something that needs to come from your executive team. Work with them to uh, put whatever resources together so that it's um, being sent out uh, with the right tone and the right um, the right sponsorship. Really um, help them visualize the change to their login process, letting them know uh, how it will change, not that it will change too drastically, uh, but it will be something different that they'll need to understand. And then provide any tips or tricks uh, that you've learned along the way so that they'll be ready when you turn on MFA. And train your users how to obtain, set up, and use the additional authentication factor to log in. Again, if it's uh, an app, make sure they understand where they can go to get that app and make sure that they've gone in and downloaded the app. Um, if it's that YubiKey or that hardware security key, make sure that they have it uh, in their possession. Uh, maybe once done, consider doing a webinar or a lunch and learn session so that uh, you can show them exactly uh, what's coming and answer any questions that they may have. Uh, maybe create a web page or uh, something tangible like a laminated cheat sheet with step by step instructions so that users can get immediate help uh, come your launch day. And then uh, if we think about uh, post launch support, uh, if you have a, a team that you work with that uh, is going to help support this initiative, make sure that they understand what's happening, uh, when it's going to um, going to happen to your users, um, and make sure that they understand exactly how to support their users um, if there are any issues with uh, the authentication factors, maybe troubleshooting login problems, generating temporary tokens. Um, should maybe they uh, lose their device, leave their device at home, um, or um, uh, for anyone who uh, uh, lost or forgot maybe that, uh, that hardware piece uh, that they use to log in. If you have more questions, we have a great FAQ out there on the uh, Salesforce um, uh, help site. So, uh, here's a quick link that you can get to for some of the most frequently asked questions um, as you start to think about rolling out MFA to your users. If you have a smaller user base, it may be something uh, that you feel comfortable just turning it on uh, all at once. Uh, but for those of us who have larger uh, groups, maybe different clouds that aren't supported um, from the previous slide, uh, a phased approach, it can work just fine as well. But of course, with anything that we do in Salesforce, we want to make sure that we're monitoring its adoption and its success. So after a rollout, ensure the success by monitoring its progress over time. Salesforce has some built-in tools that help you monitor the adoption of your MFA implementation. And to ensure the success of your rollout, uh, you may want to do something like create an MFA adoption campaign using MFA email templates, um, ask your users how it's going, uh, understand, you know, what the overall sentiment is uh, to, to MFA, um, create that campaign, get your users to adopt. 
Uh, maybe it's creating a custom list view of your users, checking the identity verification methods within that um, within that list view or within a report to find out who's using which methods to verify um, identity, track which users have adopted which methods, what's working, um, and if possible, uh, offer multiple options. So uh, the Salesforce Authenticator app, we know does not work well for everyone. Sometimes uh, people are not allowed to use their phones at work. Um, so just really think about maybe offering a variety of uh, options to authenticate so that you are really choosing what works best and what your users um, would prefer. And then um, run reports to track adoption over time. Maybe create custom reports to spot patterns in identity verification behavior within your org, your community. Make sure that people are still logging in. Uh, even though this is an additional step, um, it may be uh, uncomfortable for some people to do. So make sure that uh, they're still using Salesforce once this is rolled out so that um, it, it's not just something, you know, one more thing that's um, keeping them from going in and in using Salesforce as you have intended. And then we have this great 2FA dashboard um, that you can download from the App Exchange. Again, 2FA, two factor authentication, and MFA multi factor authentication um, are used synonymously. So uh, this is something that Salesforce Labs has put together. Um, and and uh, it, it just has the 2FA naming convention rather than MFA. But it's uh, great for you to see uh, where people are logging in from and what they're using. Uh, there's about eight to 10 different dashboard components uh, for you to monitor um, everything about MFA. And uh, if you feel like this is just one more thing that you're adding to um, to your day, you already do so much for your users in your org, uh, consider that this might be something that you can delegate. So you don't have to do this alone. Let those users who aren't Salesforce admins um, but want to help provide support or maybe they're in support, um, allow them to do so. And, and you can do that by giving them uh, special permission to manage two-factor authentication in the user interface. Um, so with that permission, they can generate codes um, if someone has lost or forgot their uh, authentication device. And uh, to help support end users with other multi-factor authentication tasks. If you use Salesforce to, um, to help support your users, you may also want to consider uh, creating macros or quick text. So that uh, those individuals who will be helping you um, in supporting your users can quickly and easily answer those frequently asked questions um, or concerns that your users have. And that's really the importance of MFA and how to deal with change management. As you start to go in to set up MFA, there are a few things you need and then four steps to complete. So um, you'll need your Salesforce org a system administrator permissions to set this up, uh, a mobile device or that second factor, maybe that hardware security key. And uh, if you're using a mobile device, that Salesforce Authenticator app. Or, um, of course, you can use the Google Authenticator app if you prefer. But once uh, you have those pieces, you want to go in and create an MFA permission set, assign that permission set to users, uh, have your users create that first pairing. So the first time after you um, give this permission set to your users, uh, they will receive a prompt on the screen that will basically tell them um, to pair with their device. And um, it's fairly um, uh, explanatory from there. It, again, it maybe takes three minutes for your users to create their first pairing, but it is something that's new and different. So make sure that you're there to support them. And then um, when you're ready to roll it out to your users, um, uh, continue on with step four. Again, this can be a phased approach. It could be um, all at once, whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, so really just figure out what works best for you and your users, your bandwidth, and uh, take that approach. But if nothing less uh, or um, it, if you do nothing um, after this conversation, uh, but go and turn MFA on for yourself, this this admin, 
um, that would be a huge step. Remember, we're trying to uh, really lock down secure or, or, or secure access for those individuals who have privileged permissions, and that is you, the system admin. We have some amazing resources to help get you started. Um, we usually run into some time constraints for a demo. Uh, so um, uh, if you want to go and test it, we definitely recommend that you do so in the sandbox. Uh, we have this uh, amazing trail out there on Trailhead that talks more about user authentication and, uh, and security um, or deploying security and access uh, restrictions within your org. This 2FA admin rollout guide um, is a great step-by-step -step, uh, way to help you walk through those four steps. More importantly, um, shows you how to create that permission set and, and assign it to your users. Um, if you want to uh, view a video, we have set up 2FA for your org out there on YouTube, so you can see how to quickly and easily do that. If you want to do a broad um, assignment and rollout of MFA, you also have the ability to um, assign that at the profile level for your custom profiles. Um, so that may be something to consider um, as well as the permission set. But um, I, I personally prefer the permission set because you do have that ability to uh, get very granular with who you assign it to and at uh, what point you give it to said individual. And of course, if you're using standard profiles, uh, that will need to be done with a, uh, a standard or, or sorry, a uh, permission set as you can to modify the standard uh, profiles. And then we are here to support you. Um, so we really just want to start the conversation with presentations like this. But we have a great group out there on the Trailblazer community where experts like myself are uh, working to answer your questions. So become a member of that group and uh, ask any questions that you have. Maybe see what other customers are asking um, to make sure that your rollout of MFA is successful. So um, here is a link to that group. Um, I know that we're coming up uh, to time here. So um, any questions that you might have uh, can be put in that group. We can try to answer a few here if we have time. Um, but uh, that that group, you know, will be here to support you uh, long uh, long after this this presentation. All right. Well, that's um, all I have for you. I just wanted to really point out the importance of securing your org considering who has what permissions within your org and then deploying um, multi-factor authentication so that we're just making access to our orgs uh, more difficult for anyone um, who may have ill intent uh, with, with gaining access. So do keep that in mind. If you're not currently using MFA, something to consider. And those resources really are great. Um, to get you started. Maybe you need a conversation with your users, with your executives. Um, there's a lot of great information there that you can share um, so that you can get that executive buy-in and sponsorship ultimately move forward uh, for you and your users. All right. Well, with that, I want to thank you so much for um, having me come and speak to you. I Hope that you have a great rest of your session. I look forward to uh, seeing you out there on the Trailblazer group to continue the conversation around MFA. Thank you very much, Kelly, for this amazing session and uh, having with us today, especially on the weekend. And you know, we have different time zone, but still you are yeah. with us. So thank you and once again, we are grateful. Yes, thank you. I'm going to start. So, seven question. I think you all are ready. So let's go ahead. You know all uh, rule like option on your device. You need to just choose uh, the correct options. So yeah, question on your screen. Very basic from the security point of view. Remind user. Never reuse password on multiple accounts in case suppose any account is compromised. <clears throat> True or false? Great, we have 21 correct answers. Someone who has uh, given wrong answer, nobody. 
uh, for learning we will avoid uh, like the using password suppose you want your one account is hacked then you can understand hacker can easily hack another account so then uh, let's see the scoreboard and we have we can see the scoreboard here now go next second question on your screen select this option in the permission select this option in the permission set for two factor authentication see carefully you can just figure it out very easily we will have permission sets and we choose these options now so which option is correct wow i can see 22 answers here awesome four seconds we are still waiting okay yes we have 13 correct answers so someone if you have given wrong answer no worry this learning for you uh, on the permission set we need to check this check box to factor authentication for user interface logins next now see the scoreboard is refreshed uh, kundan jumped on the one then sunny arish sai and ravi no worry next question again a score will uh, a score will be refreshed next question on your screen Salesforce makes it easy to set up two factor authentication through just we have learned in our session today only see carefully there was a slide in our session today and i am assuming 100% correct answer <coughs> yeah so yes salesforce authenticator great 21 correct answer so uh, we use salesforce authenticator here next question but let's see a scoreboard a scoreboard is something similar to previous one but yeah next question very carefully what helps us to prevent unauthorized people from accessing your data it's abstraction or encryption or encapsulation or platform Wow, twenty-seven answers, and still we expect great. So it is encryption. Thank you. Next question, but the scoreboard is here. Wow, Sunny jumped on the top. Kundan second, then Bablu, then Abhi, then Arvind. Okay, so you know a scoreboard is placed on the base of how much, uh, how quickly you have given the answer. Next one, beginner question. So yeah, if someone is very beginner, it's for you. a customer relationship management solution that brings companies and customer together and everyone i i can say 100% correct answer now please we brings company and customer together and so the dia maine to i have given the answer yeah sales force brings the company and customer together thank you next let's see the scoreboard okay a little bit changes next question on is pin and now it's for you what is salesforce is a set up of uh, sorry what is in the salesforce set up object set up fields and other functionality that supports a business process apps or objects or records or fields everyone know don't click wrong button in hurry yeah it's apps app okay thank you i think in, uh, let's see a scoreboard oh some new names great next last question so please play carefully question mark means option allow you to access event log file to track user activity and feature adoption and troubleshoot issue what one event troubleshoot event monitoring event adoption event tracking if you think carefully option is you know already twenty five events answers i have given some more times to think so still we have five seconds and this is last question so we can see a scoreboard after that yeah so answer is event monitoring event monitoring allow us to access event log file to track user activity okay and feature adoption and troubleshooting is so now let's see a scoreboard we will have uh, some cool swags uh, i will see you after the once lockdown will be open here so harika then we have bakundan and the second position and we join the first let's see 
Wow, Bipul, congratulations. Well played, everyone. Thank you for playing with us. And congratulations once again. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Take care. Stay safe. Thank you once again, Kelly, for <laughs> your time with us today. It's really cool. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thank you.